This video is a continuation of a tutorial on Simulink Data Tag Propagation Engine. In particular, we'll be focusing on the case of underspecified data types and how Simulink Engine resolves them. Underspecified data types can happen when there's a chicken and egg loop where blocks are connected to a uh, signal and initially they all the blocks that are connected say they want to inherit that data type, that they've not specified a type, and they're waiting for someone else to propose a type for that signal. But nothing happens. Simulink does its, takes all the information, known information that it can, and propagates them as far as it can, but then it's stuck that the unknown data types are not getting resolved. So at this point, it will pick one of the blocks that is connected to an un specified data type and it'll say to the block, hey you, pick a data type, pick something. I don't know what it is, how you're going to do it, but do something. And that block will somehow come up with a data type choice for at least one of its ports that was unknown. And then Simulink Engine will propagate that new known information as far as it can. If it reaches completion, great, we're done. If not, it will pick another block that's connected to an unspecified situation and start over and say, hey you, pick a data type. Okay? One thing to keep in mind, aware, be aware of in terms of underspecified data types is there's a diagnostic for it. You can set it to none warning or error. In some situations, underspecified data types are fine. For example, if you're in early modeling where you're, you just want an idealized model and you're happy with floating point doubles, it's very likely the underspecified heuristics will resolve to a happy data type. But if you're aim using model-based design to get your model ready for embedded production deployment, then it's less likely that underspecified data types will lead to a desirable result. Perhaps for floating point single that will work out okay, but it's probably useful to turn on the diagnostic and inspect what results do have under specified data types and see if they're acceptable. Okay, so let's look at an example. So here we have a model that has this chicken and egg situation. We've created this structure so we can play and pretend that we are like Simulink Engine. We've got all the signals A, B through H labeled with the port blocks that are connected, whether it's in port or out port, and data types. So we've gone through in the initialization phase where block B1 and B2 specified double uh, for its first input port, single for its second one, again on this instance. Then Simulink Engine would have initially done propagation. It would have propagated that information to the terminators here, 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 and here, and that would have been fine. But for example, signal C, D, G, and H, those are still unspecified and there's no information for Simulink Engine to propagate. Everybody's in an un unknown state. So Simulink Engine then at that point pick, picked one of the blocks. We also had the heuristic fired and the diagnostic fired a warning to let us know about this. And then Simulink Engine called one of the S functions that was connected to an unspecified data type and called this method, which is the one that's the, hey you, we've got unspecified data types, please pick something. And what this block did was it went through and it said, okay, I'm gonna take four actions. I'm gonna set uh, in my first input port to single, my third output port to single, my second input port to single, and my fourth output port to single. So this would be for B2. So B2, this was set to single. And B2's yes, first input port was set to single. B2's third output port was set to single, and its fourth output port was set to single. Okay. Then the block returned, and now Simulink Engine had four additional 
pieces of information to work with. And it went to block B1 and it said, hey, it's been proposed that your second input port have type single. So that would be this one. And so the block accepted that. In addition, it, it propagated information. It says, hey, if this port is single, then I want my last output port to also be single. So it went here. And then that was that phase was completed and all the information agreed so far. And then Simulink Engine said, okay, there's still some unknown cases, so let me call this block B1 and say it's proposed that your first input port have a data type of single. And the block accepted that. And then the block also said, well, if that's single, then I also want my third output port to be single. So it went here and it set that to single. And the other thing already connected to C said it was single as well. So that was a happy agreement. And so now the data type propagation was complete. Okay, now let's do this again just just to dive in and look a little more at the example of what's happening in this case when Simulink Engine called the block and said, hey, please help me resolve this underspecified situation. So we've, we're called into here, and now this example S function is trying to resolve this situation. So first it tries to collect some information about its first input port and its second input port. But those are negative one, which means it's still unspecified. So if that had known something, it would have caused this block to make a choice based on that information. But there was no information, so it didn't do that. Then it checked the second port. And again, the information wasn't available, so it didn't do this. And then finally, it went into this kind of default default, where it doesn't know anything. And it just says, OK, let's make everything a single. So it, it did that, and that completed the resolution. OK, so now let's go back to this for a second. So let's just review what we've done. Whoop. So we saw that what it means to have an underspecified situation Simulink Engine propagated as much as it could, but there was still a chicken and egg loop. It picked a block and said, hey, please do something. And we saw this example S function where inside it said, do I have some information I can use? Turned out it didn't. So then it went to kind of a default default heuristic and said, all right, let's just make everybody single. Maybe that's good, maybe it's not. Turned out to be okay, at least in the sense that it did not produce an update diagram error. Okay. And we saw an example that that fired this uh, diagnostic, so that would have alerted us that things weren't fully specified and we should probably check out those data types, make sure we're happy with them. And then we saw in that particular this S function example, which is purely for this tutorial, not a real block, but here I'll give you some information about what most base simulate blocks do when asked to resolve an underspecified situation, they will typically favor having all their port data types be the same. Back in the early days of Simulink, all data types were the same around base Simulink blocks, so it still favors that. And so what these type of blocks will do is they'll do a search for the first known data type. They'll start at their first input port, then go to their second input port, and then when they run out of input ports, they'll go to the first output port, and they'll walk down to the second and so forth. And when they first find a known data type, they'll stop that search and they'll say, okay, I'm going to use this data type and I'm going to put it on all the unknown ports. 
So if like one known port was known to be int 8, it'll set all the other imports to be int 8 and all the output unknown outports to be int 8 as well. Okay, but if none of them are known, it's a completely unknown situation, the block has no information whatsoever to go forward with, then it has to do a kind of default default. And what it doesn't, what base simulate blocks will do in that situation and, and many others from block sets and system toolboxes will do, is they'll come and look at the model configuration parameter under optimization and there's a setting for default under specified data type. And that can be set to single or double it, and blocks will take that value and use that and set that on all their unknown ports. And single, if you're aiming to deploy your design on a single precision embedded processor, setting this to single is a good choice. If you're just doing idealized modeling, then setting this to double would be a good choice. Okay, that completes this tutorial on underspecified data type propagation and simulating.